<sighs> hey guys, so for today I'm going to uh, be wiring up some more flex watt heating strips. So I just moved, right? And uh, well, not just, it's been like two months now. But this whole fish room process has just been going really slowly, step by step. I should be doing homework right now, but I just really want to start on um, this new flex watt heating strip setup that I want to have. So you can see I built these shelves, and I built them so that I can see my fish. Like, I don't have a ton of room to have a wall of jars anywhere. Uh, this is the closest I can get. But I like it because, you know, I can see each and every one of my fish when they're in this um, shelf placement here. And my plan is to have two strips of flex watt heating tape for these two rows of jars here. And then the bottom, some of the fish that I jar don't need to be heated to 80 degrees. Like this is my pet betta. Uh, he's fine at room temperature. I'm not planning on breeding or showing him. Um, and then sometimes I'll jar killifish too, or I'll jar pygmy sunfish or something like that. And they definitely don't like to be that hot. So my plan is to have these two top shelves uh, heated up. Um, so this is the 4 inch flex watt heat tape. I'm just heating the top now. Why is this one so long? It's because this one was from my old room. If you guys remember, or if you look at my old um, fish room tours, I, I had a shelf, like a 10 foot long shelf for 10 jars. And that's where this is from. So after the move I was just like, ah, stuff things, throw things everywhere. And I this ended up here hanging over the edge by a ridiculously long amount. So anyway, I'm going to go through how it's set up now and then um, how it's uh, how I'm going to wire the flex watt. Okay, I'm actually going to wire it and then um, hopefully we have a final setup. This might take a couple days because, yeah, I'm seriously really busy, but we'll see. So here's where the rest of the flex watt is. So not only do I have some on the jars up there, but I also have some on my lower um, shelf over here on the right rack. So you can see I have the larger 12 inch flex watt here, right here. Okay, I have two strips because um, I have a row of tanks in the front. These are six gallon square tanks for licorice gouramis. Okay, um, I finally got some fry, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, these are six gallon square tanks and they are heated up by the um, 12 inch flex watt. I find this is fine. This is one strip for two tanks and then the same thing on the back, uh, except there's only one tank back there. And all of the flex watt connect into, oh geez, this is hard one handed. Okay, so all of the flex watt is plugged in. You can see here, Oh my gosh, okay, so you can see here all the flex watt strips are plugged into this central thermostat. This thermostat is from Big Apple Pet Supply, I believe. If you just Google Big Apple Pet Supply thermostat, it's going to show up. You can see that I can actually dial it to what temperature that I want. It requires calibration. The temperature you see there is just a guide. You have to like plug it in, see how it um, how it does the temperature and then move it up or down if it's too hot, too cold, etc. But it's, it's pretty close. You can see I have it set at about like 84 and my tanks are actually at 80 degrees. So the way this thermostat works is that there is a probe here and it is actually in this tank. It's really hard to see in the inky darkness but it's actually in the back of the tank and because the flex watt tape is here controlling the temperature of this tank the probe that's in the back connected to that thermostat measures how warm the tank is. If it's too hot if it's hotter than the temperature I have it set at, it turns the flex watt off. It just turns the power off. If it's too cold, then it will turn the flex watt on in order to get it back to the temperature that you like. The nice thing is you can see 
These are different size flex watt strips. This is 12 inches, that's 4 inches, and yet they're all plugged into the same thermostat being read off of the same tank. Um, and they're all at the same temperature. So that's what I like about FlexWatt. Okay guys, so I have the tools assembled that I'm going to need um, in order to do this project. So I have scissors, some pliers, some electrical tape, and a sharpie. And these are some FlexWatt heating strips that I already had that I have uh, pulled out as an example. This is the one that we were just looking at, the one that um, was underneath the jars. So uh, you can see it's way too long. <laughs> I marked where I want to cut it. So if you can look, you can see that um, you have the electricity running on either side here. And you want to cut only where there is a gap in the, um, uh, yeah, there's like a pre-made gap there. And it's about one every foot. So here's another pre-made gap right there. And it just so happens that my jars, that shelf that they're on is exactly three feet wide. So I want to cut it so that I have two three foot wide strips. Okay, so this is pretty much what I want to do. Um, for this current project. I did this a long time ago, um, back, I don't even remember what I was doing with this, but um, basically this is what I want to do, okay? So if you remember back to, is it physics, when they talk about electricity, okay? You want to create a parallel circuit, so hopefully this gets in the camera, okay? So you can see that I've wired them so that the wires, okay, go from here to here to here, which is going to go to the power source, okay? So this is what it looks like when you have only one. It's very simple. You just clamp it onto the ends there. But if you want to have multiple heating strips at different levels, then you have to create a parallel circuit, okay? So. You have to go again to here, the electricity will run across here to here. And this is the important part. You need the both electrical wires to be in contact with this strip in here. And we're going to go over how to do that. Okay? But I want this. This didn't work for this one because these are too short, they're only two feet and this wasn't long enough. I don't know why I made this so short. I'm gonna make the connection between the two a lot longer uh, in case, you know, I have this kind of situation again. So always give yourself more space than you think you're gonna need. That is the, uh, <laughs> what I found out. Okay, so I ordered my stuff from Big Apple Herb Supply, okay? So this is what the box looks like. I had to order more stuff um, for this project. Oh, these are lights for my lizards. Okay, so I got more clamps. So you can see that this is what's going to puncture through the plastic and make contact with the electrical elements inside because this metal is conductive of electricity and that's what's going to take the power from the power source to the flex watt. Okay, so we got that. We got instructions. Instructions are always good. This just tells you how to basically wire them together. Okay? They don't explain the parallel circuit thing, which is what I'm going to show you. We have, um, this is very important, this is stuff that covers the exposed metal um, uh, elements. You definitely don't want um, this stuff, that metal clamp to be exposed, okay, because especially when we're dealing with water. I really like this stuff that Big Apple Herb has because you can see it's super, super thick and very tenacious. It sticks really well, so I got a bunch of those. I got some more, just in case. Uh, six feet, I didn't know if I needed more. Um, looks like I will need more, so happy I got it. So, more FlexWalk heat tape. 
me. So, mm -hmm. and I think that's it. Okay, so let's check and see if I can record. Okay, so I zoomed in. Hopefully, uh, yeah, that'll work. Okay, it's really hard to do this. I'm, I'm filming with the DSLR. I really miss my cameraman. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, let's do this. Okay, so hopefully I don't go off screen. Alright, so, first thing. Um, I know I want it to be three feet. Just so happens that I purchased six feet. Ooh, this is different. Hmm. Looks like they changed it. Well, I hope this works. I like the old stuff better. Or it looks better anyway. Eh, we'll see. Alright. Well, I was going to use part of this, but, you know, not, it would look weird if I had two different ones. So, uh, I'm going to measure it out. So, this is six feet, so I just need to cut it in half. Measure. So, I'm going to cut through the part. Okay, again, really carefully. That's probably why they changed the design. Really carefully cut here. Between the two. Okay, so there's one. Double check. If you look back to our old one. Okay, this is what we're going to replicate. This parallel wiring. Okay, so have these here. And then, in order to make this piece, what I did is I took this piece, wired it here, and then I'm going to cut it somewhere in here, strip away the outer cover in order to expose the inner wire, and slide those underneath these clamps. Okay, so I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we'll just lay it out so it's nice and easy to see. I want it to be like maybe foot, foot and a half apart. I'm going to give myself a lot of room this time so that, um, you know, maybe even two feet. I'd rather have too much than too little this time. So maybe like that. Okay, so here you go. Bah! Point of no return. Except I bought extra, so we're okay. Right? I like keeping things all laid out so I know exactly where I'm putting things. So next, if you have a wire stripper, that's awesome. If you don't like me, you can very carefully use scissors to kind of cut the outer one only and strip it off. You don't want to cut the inner wires you just want to chew away at the outer protective coating. And the way this is going to work is underneath the clamp, I'm going to put the wire in here too, so that it'll conduct electricity from this strip to this strip. So, let's consult the instructions. Okay, Take the electrical hookup, the plug with twin wire and clamps, Attach a metal clamp to opposing sides of the metal strips at the end of the heat tape while making sure that the copper clamps are in contact with the metal strips. Squeeze tightly on the pliers so the copper clamp pierces through the metal strip on the tape. And of course they're talking about this part here. Cover each metal clamp with rubber insulating tape here. Obviously, do not have this plugged in. Make sure to use electrical tape to seal the cut side of the tape as well. Plug your cord from your heat tape into the thermostat, blah, blah, blah. We'll look at that later. Okay, so really simple instructions. All we have to do is line up the clamp so that it's right over the metal. And then we're going to clamp it as hard as possible. Okay, so we're going to start on this side because this side is the least complicated side, right? So, I honestly don't know if this part, like if the silver side should be up or down. Um, I'm gonna put it down. All right, actually this is curling. I'm gonna put it this side. They're both sealed, both sides are sealed. 
So, um, yeah, I don't, I really don't think it matters. Um, yeah, I'll put, I'll put it this way. Okay, so we're going to take the metal clamps and we're going to line them up. Okay. Make sure that they are well lined up, those conductive strips, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side, okay? Haven't committed yet, I'm just lining it up. I like that these are a lot bigger than the old ones. Then I'm going to take my pliers and press, and I want to hear it go through the plastic. I'm actually going to cover that edge as well with electrical tape. Let's see if I can cut a piece that fits through the bottom. I'm going to put this, I'm going to make sure that they're both facing the same direction. So I'm going to put this like that, so both um, metallic sides are up. So I need to open this, okay. So. This is the important part when making a parallel circuit. You're going to put this inside here when you line it up into here. So I'm going to hmm, that's, that's, so I'm going to put this on the inside here. Oh, actually, I want it on this side. Okay. So I'm going to to make this parallel circuit. I'm going to put this in here. Okay so that it has to go through, make contact with the wires there as well as the uh, plastic, or sorry, as well as this strip. So, lining this up is kind of tricky. Okay, so there. Make sure the fibers Right there. There we go. So, there are the five. So I plugged it in to an outlet, just a bare outlet, not into the thermostat. And I'm just testing to make sure that heat is going through. All right, interesting. So here's my thermometer. This is like, hopefully you can see it. This is now um, like 100 degrees. This is like 90 degrees, 92 degrees. 
So I'm definitely getting less on the second one. I don't know if it's because of the different style. You know, this one appears to have more electrical element, you know, more elements in it than this one. Or if it has to do with the wiring. Okay, maybe even though this is a parallel circuit, it's getting slightly less power. But, you know, I'm going to live with it. I just need these bettas to be heated, you know, at a higher temperature. And clearly, it can get up to 93 degrees, which is good. About 90 degrees. This one's much hotter. It's now at 100, it's like 110 or it's fluctuating. So I think this will work fine. And hopefully the entire tape is the same. Yeah, it's starting to really heat up. So I think this is going to work perfectly fine. And I have enough room for the two shelves. So let me install this. All right, so here's the shelf. You can see I have this top one here. Okay, I taped it several times using electrical tape to secure the ends and the middle. And then the second strip, oops. so this is going to go to the power supply and this is going to go here. Okay, here's the other half installed. I put jars on the top one. You can see there's this loop. And then I also secured the other one using electrical tape. I really, really would not use FlexWatt without having a central thermostat. That would be very dangerous because that would just be like unbridled power from the wall socket or whatever you have it plugged into. So it's really important to have a central thermostat and to put the probe into one of the tanks that the FlexWatt is sitting on so that it can turn it um, on or off depending on the temperature of that tank. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this um, tutorial and please let me know if you have any questions in the comments.